All right, upon uh, my arrival in Tuscola ISD, I did provide the Board of Trustees and we did post publicly uh, my first 90-day entry plan into Tuscola ISD. So tonight, I have the opportunity to give an update on kind of what I've found, um, some actions we have taken thus far, and then some future uh, possibilities we may be uh, working with with the school district. I'd like to recognize our Board of Trustees. Thank you for placing uh, your trust in me as superintendent. I will remind uh, our board and inform the public here uh, some of the main reasons that interested me in Socorro ISD, uh, the long 60-year legacy of success, the outstanding student performance, our faculty and staff that are tremendous, um, and then the strong community support that we have here. I was named loan finalist back on February 21st. I started officially March 14th. The official 90-day mark was the 12th of this month. The following board meeting tonight, June 21st, I am providing with my, uh, the public with my 90-day report. Talk briefly about um, my philosophy of educational leadership and I've included two quotes here that kind of summarize that for me. What happens in the classroom with teachers and our students is essential to what we do uh, as a school district. That's a fundamental piece of what we do for all of our students. And um, as a leader, it's not necessarily taking people where they want to go, but where they ought to be. Uh, sometimes change is uncomfortable, but we need to get there on behalf of our students. Broke down the entry plan uh, into 30, 60, 90, but there's some bleed over in some of these areas. Um, throughout this process, I had the opportunity to meet with a number of our district and community stakeholders, had a chance to review the budget more than once, not just in the first 30 days, uh, reviewed some accountability for past years, and recently, uh, based on our 2022 scores, uh, reviewed board agendas and minutes in several areas for the past three years. Uh, we have established our cabinet meetings, our weekly meetings with our, our central office uh, cabinet personnel, uh, looked at some recent financial audits, and we have begun in our budget discussions some areas we may be able to find some savings and possibly increase our revenues. You'll see some of that continued into the 90-day plan. Um, we worked on the proposed budget with Mr. Ressa and his team. Uh, calendars in place, uh, considered, um, didn't just consider, followed through with our graduation and promotion activities. Uh, had an opportunity to, uh, to see nine different campuses graduate. Uh, and then tonight, of course, I'm providing our State of the District address. During the first 90 days, I was lucky enough to get out and visit all 49 of our campuses. Uh, met with several, again, several key stakeholders. Uh, we hosted two separate community discussions, one at Socorro High School, one at America's High School. Had a, a pretty good turnout, I believe, uh, to both. Fields, fielded some questions, and I hope interacted positively with our community. Uh, we also conducted some campus surveys, and we put that out there, not as a gotcha, but one, I wanted to know uh, what our, our faculty and staff uh, thought of their campuses, and then two, what our parents and community thought of their, of their schools. Uh, we have some good information, some meetings have taken place uh, with our principals, they know the information, they know areas that they're doing well, and some areas they may need to work on. And then we have some pictures here from our fantastic PR department, just providing evidence that I was out there. And I had an opportunity to see some very well-kept buildings. Um, our maintenance department does a fantastic job of keeping our, our buildings in good shape. So, uh, Socorro ISD, I believe it to be the right choice for endless opportunities. I uh, understand we have a neighboring district that says that they are the district. Well, we are the better district. We, No question the conversations and the observations I made in a short period of time, um, how committed our faculty and staff are, uh, and engagement with the community. I've, I've had the opportunity to meet with a few parents, uh, not as many as I would like yet, but several, and they are so supportive and they believe strongly in what we do here in Socorro ISD for their, for their children. Um, additionally, we do have a growing enrollment. Um, if you've driven at all around the east side, you see all the new houses coming in. Uh, those are families that are bringing children into our district and we will welcome them. Specifically, here are some things um, that I think support that we are the right choice for endless opportunities. Uh, overall, we've been the number one in student performance in the area, uh, one of the largest A districts back-to-back pre-pandemic. <laughs> we have a number of uh, CTE trainings, uh, we have award-winning fine arts, our facilities again top-notch, we offer free college classes for our students, our advanced academic academies are impressive, championship athletes and teams. In fact, we got to witness our state qualifying softball team from America's 
Uh, several board members got to go along with me to, uh, to watch them and some cabinet members. Uh, the technology we provide, state of the art. We offer free pre-K and we have a three-year-old program at many of our campuses for students who qualify and we have dual language academies for our students. And I'll expand on those in a little bit. Uh, did find we have some challenges and concerns. Um, I think every school district is taking a hard look at the, uh, the safety of their schools as, as we should. I think the recent events have brought that to the forefront for all of us though. And so that needs to be on the, on the front burner uh, for, for Socorro ISD certainly and for every school district. Uh, we know there's some learning loss. Uh, we have evidence of that of course from our star scores uh, due to the remote learning uh, associated with the pandemic. We are a growing district. So we, we recognize that um, we have to manage the facilities that we have. We're opening a new elementary this coming fall and a middle school right after that. Uh, even with those two new buildings though, we have multiple campuses that have portables. So um, as we increase our number of students, we are going to have to continue to increase our number of campuses. Um, and then of course, we're dealing with uh, some charter expansion into our area. Um, did notice as part of the strategic focus here that the strategic plan for Socorro ISD is dated back to 2013. Uh, so it's nine years ago, that's, that's pre-pandemic. Typically it's a five-year strategic plan. Uh, so I believe that's dated right now. Uh, we, we did discover that and look through that a bit. Talk a little bit more about the safety of our, of our campuses. We do have a multi-layered safety plan. Uh, here's some of the things that it, that it includes uh, with the cameras. We have both a police and a security force. And of course, we have protocols to respond to our emergencies. Going forward, uh, we have a committee in place. <clears throat> we, um, we know that there needs to be training for our campus personnel. Uh, the eyes and ears we have on that campus are really one of our better defenses uh, to realize if something is happening or going to happen at that campus. Uh, so training is a big piece of this. We also need to uh, take a hard look at our buildings and consider if there are things we need to do to those buildings to make them safer, uh, keep people out that should not be in there. And we are looking at reallocating our police resources. This was the, uh, the current year assignment of our officers. Uh, we had 54 employed for vacancies. And of these, 27 out of 54 were assigned full-time to campuses. Others went back and forth between campuses. With 49 campuses going on 50 next year with Ben Narbeth opening up, um, we have asked the board to approve tonight in their budget the addition of seven new officers. One for Ben Narbeth. We would then be able to have a uh, police officer at every one of our 50 campuses, leaving eight for administration and support. And then we've also asked for six additional uh, officers from the board tonight in, their, in the budget uh, to add a second high, uh, police officer to each of our six comprehensive high schools. They are large buildings. Um, I could be lying over 600,000 square feet, rings a bell, but they are large. And I think to be able to cover them appropriately, at least two is, is necessary. So that is in the budget tonight for the board to consider. Continue to lurk and learn. Um, again, we knew there was learning loss. Um, Socorro ISD had been number one overall for student performance. And again, we had the post-secondary readiness distinction for a large district and the back-to-back -back A ratings. We have some preliminary STAR and EOC data. Uh, it's broken down by approaches, meets, and masters, and then an overall student achievement. I'm not about to read all these numbers to you, but we have them, and we'll post uh, this presentation for anyone to view. Uh, but you can see how we compared to uh, Conatillo, Isleta, Clint, um, San Eli. So some area comparisons. We do have, just got it today, hot off the press, um, some predictions for our A through F accountability ratings. Uh, we knew the work that needed to be done. We knew that there was some learning loss due to COVID. Uh, in this region particularly, there was an extended amount of time that was spent in a remote instruction. I uh, didn't come back face to face as quickly as some other areas did. All that said, it appears as if unofficially, unofficially, our district should be about an 87. 14 campuses look like they will earn A, a ratings, 28 earning B ratings, and five earning C ratings. None of our campuses uh, appear to be scoring below a C. So considering the learning loss, uh, the loss of instructional time, the amount of time uh, that was spent with remote, uh, I, don't think, I don't think we can be disappointed with those numbers. Again, those are unofficial at this point. I believe August, middle of August, we'll be able to release the, the official ratings. 
Again, some other numbers, this is now grades six through eight, so our middle schools, how we compare, and then our end of course assessments, how we compare. Um, I will point out that a, a large percentage of our students in, um, in our middle schools, eighth grade, do take Algebra one. so most of those are, are uh, eighth grade kids taking Algebra one for the first time. Some of the action that has been taken thus far is a, uh, some refocusing to include a reorganization of our leadership. We have added in two deputy superintendents, split the house, curriculum instruction uh, versus operations, but we did so without add adding any FTEs. We reduced the number of assistant superintendents and the division of schools a little bit uh, by bringing those two deputies, so the number of our cabinet members did not change, just how we're using them has changed a little bit. We have also worked on uh, maximizing some of our ESSER funds. There were a large number of FTEs that either were planning to be hired or some had been hired. Um, it's been very difficult to fill those positions and instead we have shifted that a bit to um, continue on with more sustainable programs. So we have some social emotional learning programs, we have some intervention programs uh, that work on the instruction with instruction for our students and so we're focusing the funds more on that and then hoping to be able to sustain those after the ESSER funds are gone. Also looked at our, our growth and what that means for our facilities management. Again, our facilities are, are in top shape. We, uh, we do a great job maintaining them, even the older buildings. Uh, when you walk in them, they're clean, they're, they're pleasant to be in. Um, they're aging and they're gonna need some work. Uh, we have had some successful bond programs. I know that we did discuss uh, publicly one area where I think there were some inconsistencies regarding our new auxiliary gyms, um, the restrooms and the water fountains that are not in there. Uh, when I went through our new facilities, of course, they all had those in there. So we want to be consistent for our, our students. Uh, that came up through my, my campus visits. Additionally, I want to make sure uh, that we have some equity across the, across the district. The board approved uh, some field turf replacements for some of our high schools this upcoming year uh, at a high quality. Uh, involves the safety of our students. And I don't think it'll be too long before we need to initiate a study of future needs. Again, with the growth that we have, uh, the number of students that are moving into the school district, I have no doubt that we need to look at future needs both for that and the renovations on, on some of our older campuses to make sure we're providing an equitable educational environment for our students across the school district. Uh, in short, I, I would think that in our near future that a bond may want to be considered by this board and then for the community. Also looked at uh, some of our operational systems. And we have saw some good things, we saw some bad things. Uh, we've had some challenges with our budget, uh, with construction costs. We've had some challenges, uh, of course, due to COVID, uh, rising construction costs. Um, I think we discussed here uh, publicly again, um, and I'll point out one lapse in oversight that we, we discussed publicly, uh, following board policies. And the one that, brought, that was brought up, CH Local, um, has been addressed. Under some refocusing, we are restoring our supper program for next year for some campuses where it is eligible and makes sense to do so. Um, we are also looking at how we do our SHARS reimbursement. Uh, new processes that will increase our revenue. Uh, I think conservatively we, we can look at about a $2 million increase in revenues by changing our processes slightly. Uh, it will involve the implementation of, of technology, but I think we'll better track our students and increase our revenues. And I'm going to talk a little bit about the charter expansion that uh, we've kind of discovered, some people may have already known about, uh, but how it's impacting Socorro ISD and then what we're doing to educate our community and hopefully get some of those kids back into our schools. Um, we have, this past school year, 21-22, 8,073 students who reside in Socorro ISD and have transferred out, either to neighboring districts, possibly because their grandparents might live there, they have free daycare, um, or they have programs maybe we haven't offered, uh, or to charter schools. From other school districts, we only have 1,314 students transferring in. So we're losing, a net loss there, about 6,700 students. <clears throat> also had a COVID slide where we saw some dropped enrollment in our younger students. Our parents didn't feel safe, I think, sending those pre kers to school necessarily, so we did see a slide there. But here's some other information we, we found and, and realized about charter schools in our area. The last 10 years, from 2011-12 to 2021-2022, the number of students who are enrolled in charter schools from Socorro ISD has gone from 685 to 3,605, an increase of almost 3,000. 
And if you look at the El Paso County School Districts, you can see that percentage-wise, we are third with 7.1% of our students. However, we're the largest total, I'm sorry, second largest total number with 3,605 of our students, again, enrolled in charters. If you look statewide, there have been increases uh, in, in most regions across the state. Charter schools have been very um, aggressive. And you can see the number and the increase there uh, from El Paso from Region 19, but the percentage, 116.9% is the largest percentage growth for students going into charter schools. Some things that we are doing that we believe will help our parents bring our students back to us, the expansion of some of our choice programming. We are increasing our number of dual language academies. We are also introducing some elementary academies. We have reinstated and expanded our community education and outreach. We had a very successful Seize Your Opportunity Walk where a number of our employees uh, visited homes and provided information, showed some of the advantages of attending an ISD versus a charter school. We have done some extensive advertising. Um, for example, if you have seen me or heard me on TV, I apologize. But um, we, had to, we had to get the information out. I asked for somebody better looking and they, they had me do it. Um, but we, we put TV ads out there, radio I think for the first time. We've done a direct mail out, we have our billboards, and our uh, PR department is also um, producing a district newspaper that will list several of the things that we do in Sokoto ISD that a lot of districts don't. And that will go out to the same zip codes that our direct mail outs went out. Again, just trying to educate people so they know that they have a choice here and what those choices are in Sokoto ISD. Additionally, for the first time ever, we are working uh, side by side, hand in hand with EPISD, Isleta ISD, and Clint in a unified uh, marketing alliance. So we will be producing uh, commercials that won't just specifically say one digit or the other, but it will compare what ISDs do as compared to charters. Back in 2019-2020, Socorro ISD opened up two dual language academies, Dr. Shook Elementary and Myrtle Cooper Elementary. This year we had our first group of students who took the STAR assessment, and those were third graders. As a group, as a cohort, they scored higher, scored higher both on reading and math than their non-dual language um, cohort, so are their third graders. So we believe, we believe it's doing what it's supposed to be doing, and as such, we are increasing the number of dual language opportunities to two additional campuses. Bill Seibert and Waco will both have uh, dual language at their campuses beginning in the fall of 2022. Additionally, I challenged our cabinet um, shortly after I arrived here. Uh, for, for the most part, I was learning the district, not trying to put in too many things that were new. Um, however, um, I've had some experience um, offering choices to students and their parents. And so I, I challenged our cabinet to be able to get in place by this coming school year, uh, two schools of choice, two elementary academies. And I am happy to say that we are, are well on our way to opening up uh, Escantrias as a STEAM Academy and Paso del Norte as a Fine Arts Academy. Work is underway, training is ongoing, uh, hiring is taking place. We will be ready when we open the doors to have those academies uh, going full steam. In our district, we have had 360 students apply from outside of those attendance zones to attend these schools. Uh, and from outside of our district, as of today, we've had 60 students apply to come from either Isleta, Clan, EPISD, and attend these two academies. So I, I believe our parents and our students want those choices. Uh, we will look to increase these choices based on the community desires in, in future years. But um, as quickly as our cabinet has gotten these up and going, it, it's impressive and there seems to be a good response from our community and neighboring communities. I think that may continue to help with the, uh, the charter expansion. We're hopeful that it does, um, but there's some false narrative out there, and so I want to put it out there publicly since I, I have you as a captured audience today. You know, there's a claim, at least from one charter school, that 100% of their graduates, uh, or 100 of their students graduate and attend college. Well, that's a bit misleading because Harmony El Paso uh, if you look back from their eighth graders who started uh, in 2016 to the number that graduated, only 44%. And same thing for Idea Texas, we couldn't get the El Paso number separately. Only two thirds of those kids who, there we go, started in eighth grade actually graduated. So for Harmony El Paso, 282 kids in eighth grade back in 2016-17, only 124 of those kids 
walk the stage in 2021. It's public information, so we, we have that access to it. And so it's possible that 124 students ended up going to college, but again, that's only 44% of the kids they started with uh, back in eighth grade. And then similar, similarly for IDEA Texas, we had over 2,100 eighth graders in 16-17, 1,463 actually walked the stage. Additionally, when we talk about students being successful in college, again, public information right here, our, our graduates who attend college, 56% of them in the class of 2019 earned a 3.0 or better. If you look at the um, IDEA Texas and Harmony El Paso, only 39% of their kids earned a 3.0 GPA or better in that 2019 school year from the 2019 graduating class. So higher percentage of our kids um, have higher GPAs than those two uh, charter schools that we compete with, and a lesser percentage of our kids have the lower GPAs as compared to those charter schools. Just a couple more pieces of information so everybody understands kind of what it is we're, we are dealing with. Um, average class sizes. Uh, K-4, uh, the state gives us a 22 to 1 ratio uh, that we cannot go over without applying for an exception or a waiver. So you can see our average class size and as we compare to Harmony El Paso and to the IDEA Texas numbers. And those are actual numbers. Classrooms with 40 students uh, in IDEA. Could be a classroom teacher and a parent in there, but um, certainly not, uh, not multiple teachers. And when I talked about the strength of our faculty and staff, and not only can I talk about it, I can show numbers and compare it to charter schools and the rest of the state. The average years of experience our teachers have is 11.3 slightly above the state average, but considerably above the charter schools that are in our community, Harmony and IDEA. As far as average years with the school district, on average, our teachers have been here nine years, 1.8, almost two years higher than the state average, and again, well, well above the charters. And then our turnover rate for our teachers. We lose 8.8% of our students, which is 5.5% less than the state average and considerably less, again, than Harmony and IDEA schools. In Socorro ISD, talk about academic, co-curricular, extracurricular. Our students can compete 12 or more college hours. They can enroll in an associate's degree program, participate in UIL fine arts programs, athletic programs, choose from seven advanced academics academies, 45 career and technical programs. So all 47,400 or so of our students have that opportunity. Everybody sees the number there for area charter schools, right? Yeah, they don't, they don't offer these programs. So as we're talking with our community and talking about what we offer versus what they offer, uh, I mean, it, it's clear we are just trying to do a better job of communicating it to them so they realize the choices they have in Socorro ISD. All right, I know I spent a lot of time talking about charters, but that is a focus for us to get our kids back in where we believe we can provide a, a high-quality education to them. Priorities for this summer. <clears throat> School safety, top priority. Uh, we will be working diligently to improve the safety at each, each one of our campuses. The budget development and implementation, as well as our uh, compensation and retention for our employees, and those are both, of course, on, on tonight's agenda. Uh, we also have some alignment we're doing within our academics. And it's time to reset, readjust, restart, and refocus. So I will be bringing to our board and then to our community uh, a process to go through to develop a new strategic plan, a new five-year plan. Uh, we know where we are now, post-pandemic, or sort of post-pandemic. We have good data that's current. We can develop a good five-year plan in several areas, academic, safety, et cetera. And then we will report regularly back to our board and the community to let you know how we're doing on it.